Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you once again to the program Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. Glad to have you here with us again, as always, here at Destiny Preparation Church, 1230 Long Pond Road in the town of Greece, just northwest of Greece Ridge Mall. So happy to have you here at any time and happy to have you here on the program. For those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, catching it for the first time, let me just let you know that it airs every week. We have a new program every week, both on television in the greater Rochester area, the northwest suburbs, along with the city. Channel 15, RCTV in the city, glad to be a part of things there. And also in the suburbs on Time Warner Cable, probably channel 98.5 in most areas, 15, I believe, still in a couple, but mostly 98.5. You can tune us in there at the times that are on your screen. Notice more than one time a week. In case you miss it, you can catch it another, another time on another day. Also, if you miss all of that, you can catch it on our Facebook page. We launch every Sunday morning our Sermon of the Week on Facebook. The page is Destiny Preparation Church. Can't be much easier than that to find, and it is the only one. You can also check out our YouTube channel, in which case you'll see our history, our archives of all the sermons over the past several years there, along with other activities. On the Facebook page, you'll find a lot of other things, too. You'll find our launch on Sunday. You'll find comments and things that we share. You'll find pictures of activities and other things that have gone on in the church, and there are a lot of things that we do here which are just plain fun. You'll see pictures of those things, celebrations, events that we have that are related indirectly to the church, things that you can't find on the television program you'll find there. So I invite you to join us and connect up with any of those things to find out more about the church. But most importantly, it's important that you come. It's one thing to watch from a distance. It's a whole other thing to be here in the atmosphere, in the presence of God. And I want to invite you to come and be here. Sermons are great. The conversation, hopefully helpful and beneficial. But most importantly, is to be here in the presence of God when it comes. Join us every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary at Destiny Preparation Church, 1230 Long Pond Road. Or you can connect up with us on Wednesdays. Wednesdays we have Bible study at 7 p.m. Just before Bible study, we join for prayer. So people actually come at 6.30 and start gathering for prayer here. We have a very special prayer line as well. If you can't come, if you're not in the immediate area, if you're watching this program from somewhere outside of Rochester, know this, you can call and join us for prayer on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 8 a.m. We have prayer twice a week by phone, and people call in from throughout the country. It's amazing. It's so exciting seeing so many people call in. We have people call and give testimonies. We have prayer requests. We pray for them. We hear what God is doing in their lives. So come and connect up. You may know somebody who can't go to church, who's shut in, who's in the hospital, an older person that can't get out, somebody who would love to be in church and can't, somebody who's not from this area. You may have a family member that you're praying for or that's in need of prayer and they're outside of connection to church. You can encourage them that they can call in and join us and be prayed for wherever they are. What a wonderful opportunity and a wonderful ministry and you can be a part of it right now. Now let me tell you something else. Speaking of other ministries, there's a great ministry that's coming up too I want to tell you about. Number one is our mission trip to Liberia coming up in November. Awesome, awesome, amazing that. I would have never imagined it's happening, but there are four pastors joining together, including myself, to go over to Liberia to minister there to pastors and people in that community of Liberia, at West Africa. What a powerful, powerful experience. You know, there's been a lot going on over there. This is the central area where they had the Ebola virus just about a year ago, and we're going in there to minister, to pray for people, to, to, to teach pastors, a group, large group of pastors that are coming to together and we're going to be coming into that area to teach them, help prepare them to spread the gospel in that area of West Africa. And I want to tell you, you can be a supporter of this ministry. We need your help. We're raising funds for the trip and for the expenses of the trip and so that we might be able to do other things in conjunction with this missionary ministry. We need your support. If you can, go to our site, gofundme.com slash 
Liberia Mission 2015. You can donate any amount there from $5 to $10,000 or more if you'd like. And we, we will use that money to prepare a group to go over and be a blessing to this area. You know, I didn't even realize that this is a particular area that was founded by American slaves back in the late 1800s when they were freed. They went back over to Africa and they founded these communities. And so we're actually preaching to our own people over there, but helping them to spread the gospel. What an exciting, exciting opportunity this is. And again, you can be a part of it. Support us at GoFundMe.com slash Liberia Mission 2015. Whatever amount you give will be a donation given to a tax uh, deductible account, to a, to a uh, 501c3 account. So it will be a tax deduction. You will receive a thank you letter email, which is your, your receipt, and you can use that for your own tax purposes if you like. This will be a blessing to us in this ministry, and hopefully a blessing to you. This isn't for our funds, it's for the fund of the trip, and so I pray that you'll bless us to be able to grow it, to bring other people. We'd love to be able to bring musicians and send over musical instruments and all kind of wonderful, wonderful things. So, pray about it, receive from God, and go to our site and be a blessing. Also want to let you know about another ministry that's taking place right now here in the Rochester area for the men. We come to that time for a special event called a conversation about relationships. We did one earlier in the, earlier in the year on, on temptation, which was powerful. We need to talk about that. Men, men have personal, unique temptations we have to deal with. But now we're talking about relationships, and trust me, we have issues there too. If you don't believe me, ask your wife, ask your girlfriend. They'll probably tell you, yep, yeah, they got relationships. Ask your sister, she'll tell you too. <laughs> you know, come and join us, all the men, young and and old. We want to invite you to come. This is going to be a blessing. We're going to talk about male-female relationships. We're going to talk about uh, father-son relationships. We're going to talk about some of the things that have impacted you in your life and hopefully help us to do better and to be more effective in terms of how we build the relationships around us. This is so important because it's the only way we can truly be the leaders in our lives and in our, in our homes, in the situations that we're supposed to be. Come and be blessed by this. Join us. It won't be here. It's going to be at uh, Provision Full Gospel on East Main Street. And it's coming up, so I want you to come and be a part of it. Be a blessing with us right in the city, Provision Full Gospel Church. God bless you. Now let me take you to the Word of God. We're going back into a special word for you. This is part one of, uh, of two and a sermon from several weeks ago, and this leads us, we've been talking a lot in the church about identity and understanding who you are, understanding what our purpose is. This sermon is called Your Life Testimony, or Your Life Sermon, and it's sharing with you about this issue of what it is that you share to other people through the way you live. Every day you live, you're sending out something, an indication, and hopefully it's, it identifies God and what God can do in your life. So I want to share this with you, your life sermon. This is part one of part two. We'll finish it next week. I pray this blesses you. Don't forget to contact us, connect up with us, call us, more importantly, come and be with us in all these things. And don't forget to support uh, Library Mission, GoFundMe.com com slash Liberia Mission 2015. God bless you. I hope you're going to see you real soon. It's important for us as children of God to understand who we are so that these influences around us don't turn us or change us or cause us to change from what God would have us to be. Part of the process of being saved is the process of God changing us from what we are into his image. How many of you realize that you and of yourself are not equal to everything God wants? I'm still waiting. Amen? Amen. Amen. I should see 100% of the hands up right about now. How many of you realize that you are not the same as what God would have us to be? Amen? Amen. What you want sometimes differs from what God wants. What you want sometimes differs from what God wants from you. Amen? He might want you to be kind and you want to be mad. Amen? Amen? Amen. He might want you to show love and you want to show vengeance (laughs) and anger and revenge. Amen? You want to be strong, and God is telling you to be weak. One of the reasons why it was so amazing to people when they heard the doctrine of Jesus, when, and if you look in Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7, the sermon, we call it the, the Sermon on the Mount, there's so much that Jesus says there that seems to be so much in opposition of what we think is natural and normal and good. Jesus tells us to love our enemies. Amen? We want to hate our enemies. He tells you to pray for those who despitefully use you. We're like, what? 
to, I want to I do something to them, but it's not pray. Amen? Come on now, we're talking pra- reality, right? Amen. Tell me the next time somebody comes in your face and tries to mess up your situations that you get an in- automatic instinct response to pray for them. <laughs> Usually, if you're praying, it's not for them. It may be for you that you don't do what you want to do. Are y'all with me? We in ourselves are a corrupted image of God. We, 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 we were born and shaped, amen, in his image, but the Bible says that then we were born in flesh, and in being born in flesh, we were born and shaped in iniquity. In other words, we were, we were shaped in, in sin, things that were not like God. We were supposed to be like God, but sin has corrupted us, and so our natural instinct is the instinct of sin. If you get put in any pressure zone, typically your natural response is to do the thing that is self-survival, self-instinct, self-preserving, self-satisfying. It's about you. Amen? Amen. If you don't believe that, get, get pushed and por- cornered into a, corner, a tight enough corner and see what, happens, see what comes out of you. Amen? Usually it's not, oh Lord, how much I love you. <laughs> it takes some changing amen, in our nature for us to become like that. And so understand that, that being the case, being in and around this world, the world naturally resolves itself to do things which are satisfying to us, amen, in our sinful state. To be like God is to be unnatural in this world. I want you to get that. To be like God is to be unnatural in this world. The reason you need to understand that is because it's an indicator to you that to truly walk and be like God, you're going to have to be different than people around you. Are you with me? I want you to grab that. If I'm truly going to be saved, if I'm truly going to represent Christ, if I'm truly going to be what God would have me to be, understand there are going to be times, many times, when you are going to be different than those things happening around you. Different than your friends, different than your co-workers, different than your schoolmates, sometimes different than your family. Amen? So tell somebody real quick, tell them get used to being different. Tell them get used to being different. Amen? Because if we sign up to be like Christ, we're going to be different. Christ was different. So for us to be like him, which means we're going to be different, like, different than the world. I want you to understand what I want to talk to you about today is this under, the, the idea that whatever you are and however you behave, your life is a, is, is, is a, is a testimony to somebody else. Your life is a sermon. Your life is an indication to somebody else. And so the way that you walk and the way that you behave, first of all, get this, somebody say, somebody's watching. No matter what you're doing, how you behave, and it's not just a matter of what you say, it doesn't matter what you come up in front of this pulpit and, and talk about or preach, amen, somebody's watching not just what you say, but they're watching your life. Your life is a ministry. Your life is a testimony. We had that song that came on earlier, I am a living testimony. It was there for a purpose because you need to understand that you are a living testimony. That song talks about, amen, all the good things that have happened and how God graced and how God blessed. But understand, even in in between those miracles, your life is still a testimony. (laughs) What's more important than the things God brought you out of is how you behaved in the things that you were in. Oh, did y'all hear me? How you behave in the things that you're going through is what really talks to people. So understand that your life is an example to someone. We all seek examples in life. We all seek mentors, guides, sometimes without even realizing how much. We all are seeking for some image to help us along the way, to guide us, particularly when we're young, we're establishing, finding ourselves, seeking our identity. We're looking for someone that's going to show us uh, 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 what's right and versus wrong. And we look for truth. A lot of times, even as we're adults, we're going through certain things, we look to see how to do. I don't know if anybody's ever been in a situation and you just don't know how you're going to handle it. Anybody ever feel like they're trying to figure something out all by themselves? You're in a situation you feel like you're all alone, you feel like there's nobody else you can talk to, nobody's going through like what you're going through, and you're trying to find something to indicate, show you, how do I deal with this situation? How do I go through? We all have a natural tendency to look for something to guide us, 
through things that we've been dealing with and going through. And, and nobody really goes through anything all by themselves, all alone. But we have to be conscious and careful of what we choose, amen, to follow after. Because these things are trying to direct us in some direction which may be right or may be wrong. We're impacted sometimes more than we think by those around us. Sometimes we feel like we can just hang around certain things and, you know, it's not going to bother me. You know, I am who I am. You hang around certain music. And it's not a problem. I can handle that. Or you know what, you just humming the words to stuff that's all about stuff that you're not supposed to be into. When you just, the words just get locked up. Ooh, baby, I love it. Yes, yeah. Ooh, uh, mm, uh. It's gotten deep on the inside. Amen. Things settle into you. And, and, and it's, sometimes you stop and listen to the words, you know. And you'd be like, oh, wait a minute. What, was, what did they say? <laughs> what was that about again? I didn't realize that, that that's what they were saying. I had people sometimes bring back some of them old good songs that we used to listen to and, and, and just read the words instead of singing it to the music. And you'd be like, hmm, wow. What, what was that? I, I didn't realize that's what that was all about. I, had, I didn't have that picture in my mind quite, quite the way they were. Hmm. We allow things settle into us, and before you know it, they, they draw us, they drift us away. We have to be careful because we are impacted by things that surround us many times more than we ever realize. We're impacted by those who raise us, by our friends, by our teachers. We find certain things acceptable because of the fact that we've seen them in other people around us. Certain things that we tolerate in our lives, certain things that are unacceptable. It's because somebody taught us you don't do that. That doesn't happen that way. Sometimes even the way you handle guests depends on who, 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 what you saw in your household. Some people, you know, you don't let certain people into your house. Other people let anybody in their house. Some people, amen, don't let somebody in without offering them something. Other people don't know that. But many times because of where, where you were raised, what you saw impacts what becomes normal and acceptable to you. We're impacted by those around us, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but these things have an influence on us. And likewise, understand that whether we like it or not, in inverse, somebody is watching you. Just like you used to watch somebody, just like you have observed something from somebody, just like you have interpreted some things and applied some things from what you've seen, somebody is watching you. The question to you is what direction are you pointing them into? What direction are people going in because of what they see from you? You ever had one of those moments when you were doing some things and perhaps you had children, you had young children, and all of a sudden you saw them do something or heard them say something and you like, and when you think about it, you realize where they got it from? You ever have one of them moments? Amen? So where did you learn that? Child looking at you. We have to be conscious of what we're sharing. I've shared with many parents many, many times. You have to understand that your children, you have to live a life that you want your children to live. A lot of times we want to do our own thing and then we get upset and disgusted when our children do certain things. And, oh, what's wrong with them? I wish they wouldn't do. You have to ask yourself what you're living in front of them. That may be drawing certain things out of them. You have to be conscious of the fact, husbands and wives, when you're arguing in front of your children. Amen. You have to ask yourself, what do you want to see out of them when they grow up? What do you want to see as the norms in their house? What are the situations that you would, would not want to see going on in their home? How would you want them or not want them to behave? Understand you have an accountability because someone is watching you. It may not be your children. It may be the people on your job. Maybe the neighbors in your neighborhood. Amen? Watching you. <laughs> Some of us don't want them watching us. But understand, they're watching you. They're watching, amen, how you handle certain things. They're watching you come. They're watching you go. They're watching your family when it seems to be out of control. They're watching how many times the police come to your door. <laughs> they're watching to see what's happening in and around you, how social you are, how isolated you are. How many times you have people over? How many times you just, you know, how noisy it is at your house? What kind of music is pumping out of your house? They're watching you. 
They want to see not only the things that happen in the norm, they see you when you're under stress. They see you when you're going through things. They see you when you lose your job. They see you when you have difficult times. They see you, amen, when the children are growing up and trying to, trying to act crazy. They see you when you're in good times and they see you in, in bad. And they are watching you. And I ask you again, what is your life telling them, not only through what you say. It's one thing to go past somebody and say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I love the Lord, amen. But it's a whole nother thing when words start coming out of your mouth, amen, when situations are going on, amen, and you think nobody knows about it, but they can hear it echoing down the hallway and down and around the corner, amen, because they know, uh-oh, something must be going on over there. Come on, somebody. Amen. Understand somebody's watching you. And we have to be conscious of what's going on, amen, because people watch us. As Christians, we're called to be lights in the midst of darkness, amen. Matthew chapter 5 teaches us some things. Jesus was speaking there. Understand this, we have to be willing leaders, willing leaders in facing the challenges of life. Somebody's going to watch you. You're going to lead somebody, and you have to be a willing leader. Matthew chapter 5, amen, verse 13, the Bible speaks to us. Jesus spoke to us about a couple things here that we need to understand. The first thing he says in verse 13, he says, ye are the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth, first of all, 13. You're the salt of the earth. It says, but what good is salt if it has lost its savor or its flavor? You are the salt of the earth. You are intended to be salt. Salt flavors and preserves. Salt changes the nature of things. And it is only valuable if it makes a change in the nature of things. You see, we've got a little bit sometimes mixed up. We consider ourselves as Christians going into the world and sometimes we feel like, okay, we need to fit, we need to mingle in, we need to fit in. But salt does not fit in. Salt changes the atmosphere of what it has been put into. Something doesn't taste the same after you put salt on it. You ever taste something before you salt it? and after, and you know the change in the flavors of what it is post being salted. Now, if you put salt on that, on that whatever it is, and the flavor doesn't change, what good is the salt? If we are the salt of the earth, then it means that there's an intention for us to change whatever atmosphere we are being put in. Today we're dealing with a day of conformity where we just want to fit in, we want to line up. It's just enough, we, uh, we've been con kind of confused to thinking, it's just enough for me to, you know, as long as I love Jesus, it'll just, you know, it'll be whatever. But understand this, it is not our intention as Christians to fit in. It's our intention as Christians to show a difference between what God has done with us and what God is, has, what's happening in the world. That doesn't mean we have to be crazy. That doesn't mean we have to go out of our mind. Doesn't mean we have to be insane. Doesn't mean we have to stop in the middle of traffic and drop down on our knees, amen, under the stoplight and start praising God. Because that stuff is not godliness, that's foolishness, amen. Praise God, just throw that right out there, amen. That's foolishness. Nobody needs you in the middle of traffic light waving your hands, praising God. What they need is to see how God changes your character, how God changes your response, how God influences your life, how God changes your perspective on things. That's what they need to see. They need to see how God changes how you handle stress and pressure, how, they, how you handle when everybody else is losing their job, including you. They need to see how you're dealing with, amen, the stress that comes along with life when things aren't going well. They don't need to see you always not going through something. They need to see how you go through the things that happen in your life. They need to see you praising God when you hurt, because they don't know how to do that. They need to see you loving God when everybody around you is against you. They need to see you back up from your enemies, not take them on. They need to see you allow God to change things in your life instead of you doing it yourself. Well, that's what they need to see. There needs to be a light that shines out of you. As Christians, we are responsible, and salt changes things. Everybody say that. Say, salt changes things. Say this, I need to change my atmosphere. Understand this, you can go into, jo into, into your job as normal as you can be. Dress as normal as you want, amen. Be smile as you keep clean hair, you know, teeth brushed, amen. Look good, get your hair done, amen. But there needs to be a character about you that changes the atmosphere. 
Somebody ought to be uncomfortable acting a certain way around you. Telling certain jokes around, they don't need you to laugh with them. They need to see your, if there's something that makes them uncomfortable. Oh, I can't tell this joke in front of Brother Bob. We got to go on over here. Amen? Whether you said something about it or not, there needs to be something about you that makes them feel uncomfortable. Why do I say that? In the next verse, verse 14 says this, says, ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And look at what it says. Like a, a city on a mountain, you have a lot of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it goes to light unto goes and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. You are a light in the world. Listen, light shines, radiates, and overwhelms darkness. 